Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial on Sylvie's e-commerce components for Symfony 2. My name is Axel and in this video I will be showing you how to override and extend some Sylvie's components. Let's have a look. I presume you already have Sylvie's installed. If not, go check out my video on the installation process. If you'd like to know how to override templates, check out my previous video. Now in this video I want to show you guys how you would go about adding another field to the product model. Let's say you have a web shop that sells shoes and because sizes usually are not always the same across brands, you want a completely separate field to type in some advice about picking your shoe size. So now you know what I'm planning on doing, I'd like to start off by showing you one of the reasons I love Cilius. They build these awesome configuration trees allowing us to override and extend almost any class. Let's go ahead and create our own product model, using the product model from the core component as our base product. Let's create the directories needed here. Product class. Let's clean up this mess. And use the product from the core bundle as our base product. Okay, now our, our class will extend that one. We also need to create our own product translation model since the field will be translatable just like the product description and name are. That's where we are going to add a new property. And we do it the exact same way. We extend the core bundles component called product translation. We use that as our base product translation. string I will just generate um, a getter and a setter you can do this manually too but it doesn't really matter and now we can go back and add some setters and getters to our product I'm not going to get into how the translation work right now. Maybe I'll create another tutorial for that later. We have to use the same names of the getters and setters in our product translation model. Translate. Side advice. Now that our models have been created, we need to configure Cilius to use our models instead. We do that by creating a config.yaml file in our resources config folder. Don't forget to import this config file in your general config file in the app directory. Let's do that right now. Let's open up app config and import the resource right here. App bundle, that should be it. So now let's override the models that Silius uses with our own. We use Silius products, which is a root node. Under there we put classes product and model. And here's where we specify the full namespaced class name. And the products, we do the same for the translation. 
which is under translation again model. Great, now Silius will use our models instead. If you are not sure about the configuration tree structure, you can always go to the bundle you are trying to override. Follow me into the vendor directory to the product bundle. Down here at Silius, source, bundle, product bundle, and in the dependency injection folder, We will find a configuration.php file. And this is where the configuration tree is built, actually. Here's a root node, which is basically an underscored version of the bundle name. We have some other stuff too that we're not really using at the moment. The classes section, that's what we're looking for. It's just a private function that adds other nodes to the root node. So that's classes, product, model. Classes, product, model. See, it's, it's the same exact structure. And that's the class name we replaced. Same for translation, model. Small side note, if the configuration tree is unclear to you, and I admit at first it was kind of confusing to me too what's going on here, but um, you can use a core bundle as an example. Core bundle already extends some other parts, so have a look in there. In your resources config app folder, you can find studios.yaml file, which contains all the overrides for the core bundle. So you can use that one as an example or a reference. Anyway, let's proceed. We need to map our newly added fields so Doctrine picks up on it and eventually can get saved into our database. So let's create a new XML mapping file under the resources config Doctrine called producttranslation.orm.xml and product.orm.xml. And I'm going to look for a similar XML file later on to copy it so I don't have to use the doctrine uh, documentation. So let's go look for the product translation of RM.XML. We need the one from the core bundle. this one right here so we can copy the whole file and we'll change that to what we need so that's size advice we'll change the column name to size underscore advice the class name should also be ours. App bundle entity product translation. And the table stays the same. We'll do the same for product. Um, we're not really going to add fields over here, but Doctrine needs the mapping file for some reason. So we'll just create that one real quick. Now we need to update our database schema to include a new column. So open up your console, go to your root directory and type php app console doctrine schema update with the option dump sql. This way we'll uh, get a look at what's actually going to happen if you proceed with the update. OK, 
Okay, we can see here that an alter table is going to be executed on the Silius product translation table. And they're going to add a column for us called size advice, which is really what we want. So we'll execute the same command, but this time using the force option, which will push the changes to our database. Okay, that was successful. Awesome. We're almost there. Next thing we need to do is adjust our product edit form so we can start using our newly added field. So let's create a form that extends the core bundle's product translation form. Because remember, the field is part of the product translation model, not the product model. Create a new class. And I'm going to cheat off this base form we're using, since we're basically doing the same thing. Let's copy this one. And I'll make sure I'll use that one as a base form. Otherwise, a short description will get lost. Extends base type. I seem to be missing a use statement for the form builder interface. Put that one real quick. Let's change the property here to size advice which should be the property name from the product translation entity. We'll change the label to something that makes sense. Finally, let's um, configure the form. Use our app bundle form type, product translation type form. Now the only thing we really need to do is uh, adjust the templates of the product detail page. So let's go grab that from the web bundle. If you don't know how this works, you should check out my previous video. It's really easy to override templates. I'll create a views directory over here. Bundle, web bundle, resources, views. And it's this template right here. Let's copy this one and create the exact same structure in our bundle. Use products and let's space it in here. Okay, and let's add the size device below our product description. Product dot size device. And that should work. Now let's go find out if that actually did what we expected to do. Let's open up our browser. Go to the administration part of Silius, the backends. Let's just pick a product real quick. It doesn't really matter which one. Now the t-shirt will do.
then as you can see, we have an extra field called side advice. So we can put something in here. You should pick a half size extra. Save that. Let's have a look in the store. And if everything went right, we will see our new field displayed on the product detail page. So there you go. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I will plan on making some more of these about Suze, so subscribe to keep track of my uploads. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I try my best to answer all of your questions. Uh, you can find Symphoniac on Facebook and Twitter. You can find the links uh, to those pages in the description. Thanks for watching.